I would love to talk a little bit about the field because it's an alive thing. It's a responsive thing. It responds to whatever it is we're creating. And I was talking about our intention being sort of the first, one of the first steps to manifesting anything. But the reality is we don't have to have an intention to create. We are always actually creating. It's just that most of us are creating in the wild. We're just you know, <laughs> thinking things, we're feeling things because we're, we're in, the, on, in our commute, we're having some anger and we're having thoughts that complement that and boom, we're manifesting our bad day. We are always magicians in our lives. But talk a little bit about the field and what you think that is and, and um, how we interact with that on the daily. The field would be essentially the, the all, you know, God or the universe and the sea of energy. And we kind of see ourselves as, as, you know, in order to orient to an individuation, we kind of see ourselves as autonomous and then we have a relationship with the field. And the truth is that we are seamlessly a part of it, but we do get to contribute to it. I like to, the best way I like to understand or kind of understand how the field works, I think is really helpful to think of it as an ecosystem because we all, we, I mean, we are nature. We are just extensions of Gaia. We are the four elements with the fifth element of ether. And we know by observation how nature works. We know that if a plant has needs, it will be met by the ecosystem in order for it to fulfill its highest destiny because that highest destiny gives back to the field or to the ecosystem right. itself. And it is cyclic, it is, it is symbiotic. And that is exactly what this is. The field is composed of life force energy, of light, of love. It is composed of love. And so it will be supporting love and it will be supporting alignment. And that's, and then when, when something is, when we are having a loveless thought or a loveless frequency, then we sort of separate ourselves but guess what? We then create more thirst in our, in our being and we are still supported. We're supported with more nutrients, with more support, but we need to get healthy again back into the alignment of the loving vibration. And so that is what I see. The, that's the best way that I can explain the field. Again, it's just to think of it, take it out of the mystery kind of uh, the field and think of it as an ecosystem. The universe is an ecosystem right. or a body of water, whatever helps you to understand how everything right. is connected. That's so it's like um, spiritual permaculture, <laughs> you know, where you yeah. have the tree that um, shades the shrub, the berries feed the birds, the droppings, you know, put nitri nitrogen into the soil, the soil feeds the roots and everything is connected and everything is supporting the other thing. Yes. Um, and also with the field, there's no judgment because yes. um, it's, it's not, it's not saying Trisha, you're creating something that you might not want to create because you're feeling this way or you're thinking this way. Instead, it just responds to meet you where you are. And I love that you say it's supportive. Even when we are in a loveless space or in an unintentional space, the field is supporting us. It's arranging things around us so that we can come back into alignment and come back. Well, it, we are symbiotic at the time, but come back into the awareness of that symbiotic nature more fully. Do you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah, that's lovely. I like that. I love the idea of it being a permaculture and that everything is doing is, is playing its part. You know, uh, I don't know if you've ever heard this, but did you know that squirrels lose 80% of the seeds that they plant? 80% of the, of the nuts and, and seeds that they hide for, you know, right. foraging sake, they lose 80% of them. I had and never heard that. That's how forests are grown because the squirrels are losing technically. Right. They only need 20% of them anyway. Right. And so the squirrel is participating. Like you said, there is no judgment. The squirrel isn't in angst because he's lost 80% of them. He right. is just participating according to his nature. And right. then it's, oh, isn't it great? Yeah. This is so good. It's like <laughs> mushrooms. I don't understand yet fully the consciousness of mushrooms. Yes, it's called the mycelial yes. network. Yes. My husband is geeking out on this and he's been doing this for months, but he's like, no, this is what you're, because my husband's not necessarily spiritual, but like that's as close as he can get to understanding these spiritual concepts because it's a communication system within the earth and it's feeding everything and where they are noticing a, a lack, they, they, they send the nutrients that are needed. It's just so beautiful. And we yeah. are of that. That's how magical we are. We absolutely are. And, you know, whether, 
you know, that's what I've said many times, whether or not we are telepathic and it's completely non-physical or if there is a somewhat physical element to it, which could be enzymic or something, it doesn't matter. You know, if it's microscopic, like it might be, well, the, you know, the mycelial network is, is not microscopic, but at the same time, I think there is, I think it's both. I think it's both and. I think it is the physical, but it starts, it always, always starts from someplace that is non-physical. It always starts with a feeling and then a thought. And even though, you know, of course, you know, I'm like the Gaia gal, I believe that even though it's not exactly like our feeling and thought, but the tree and the mycelial network and the, and the fungus, they have a, a very similar mechanism of feeling, of frequency. They have frequency as well. They just, they manifest in a way that we don't totally relate to. It's just a different kind of a, of a being. Right. We don't detect it yet, but hopefully at some point we will. And mm -hmm. I think there are a lot of scientists that are attempting to just the, just the communication, commune, communication yeah. <laughs> of all yeah. these different species and um and where we fit in the midst of all of that it's it's such a beautiful connective web of just divinity and that's how i want people to 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 see magic you know I, that's how i want people to understand how powerful and how intricate and integral they are to the entire system and how their intention and using a technique or using a ritual actually impresses upon that field that that beautiful web and something comes from that something's made manifest from that and it's because of you it starts with you now how do you shift somebody who comes into the information feeling disempowered in their own magical nature like how do you convince somebody that the power is within them how would well, you do that? Well, I mean, I, if it were, when, when we are that broken, I'll say when, because certainly I have been that broken before. Me too. We, well, you have to, it, it definitely is individual. You want to meet people where they are, but you can definitely, one, one way that you can do it is you can definitely point them to the magic that they have, uh, you know, that they're not aware of, that they've already manifest. And you, there are different, you know, and some of the tools that help us with that is something like, you know, astrology or numerology and just see how they actually are walking around and magic is happening, even if they right. don't realize how known they are. They are known by this field, by this. Like alignments are happening and confluence of events are always taking place, whether they're aware of them or not. Yes. And so pointing them to the magic that they've already created. And of course, you and I are always looking for the light. Even if someone is in a state of feeling suffering and brokenness, there's still light in their life. And, mm -hmm. and then we can also just, we can play around with it. We can start, one of the things that's really helpful are some divination tools. I really think like, like Oracle cards are really a fantastic tool. So getting them into the fact that they have a guidance system, that would be the first step for that person who is feeling like I'm disempowered, I'm not magical. Starting to work with Oracle cards or tarot, if you like the tarot system, I, I, I think it's really empowering because as you set an intention and then you pull that card and then it is supporting that and to sometimes so un, usually so undeniably, it's like literally the words that I spoke or thought or journaled and there they are on this card. There are many different ways that you can use Oracle cards and I'll, I'll tell you, I don't necessarily use them every day at this point, but then I go through periods where I do use them daily in the same way where I go through periods where I'm reading books pretty like one book to the other and other periods where I'm not really reading a whole book, you know, right. that's what cards actually are. I asked spirit once I was like, am I, is it weird that I focus so much on my clients, you know, who need to get into their empowerment a little more with cards. And yeah, spirit showed me, no, it's just a book <laughs> unbound <laughs> and <laughs> books are very helpful to humans. You know, like that old Bible that we're talking about. I used right. to use the Bible as a divination tool. I just, of course, didn't call it that. I would flip open to a scripture and allow my Bible eyes, bingo. <laughs> Bible bingo, yeah. Bible bingo. <laughs> allow my eyes to land where they were drawn, where they were attracted, law of attraction. And it was exactly what I needed to hear. It's just to realize how connected you are. It helps you to understand you have your own guidance and you have uh, the cooperative components that are showing that to you in synchronicities. So that's where I would start is to get them connected with their guidance system. That, 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 that's really cool. Yeah, as you see the synchronistic things happen using Oracle cards or using whatever tools um, you choose to use or that you resonate to. When I have a question about that as well, let me write it down. 
because I want to ask you about it. But as it begin, it, it, be, it begins to be demonstrated, like, oh, this does work, or oh, that does actually make sense, or oh, that actually really does speak exactly to what it is my question was, then you can really start to say, okay, maybe there is this magical universe, maybe there is this magical nature, and truly um, get, into, get into connection, that it's actually coming, the, the call is coming from inside the house, it's actually <laughs> coming from within you, and the tools are just rising up to support you. Anytime we seek to be more deeply connected to God, to creator, to spirit, the entire world of spirit shows right up. They're like bells on. They're like so ready to go because that's their role. All of our emissaries, our angels, our ancestors, our guides, that's their role. It's to support us in our deeper connection and to be in wholeness and fullness who we came here to be. So when that's our intention, taking a course like yours, taking your workshop, if the intention is to connect and to manifest and to get into alignment, spirit shows up to help facilitate that 100%. Don't you agree? Absolutely.